Good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's time for your afternoon daily tropical update. And we've had some action out there in the tropics over the last week or so. Still nothing heading towards southeast Texas, but still some systems that I'm here to tell you about so you'll know exactly what's happening and where they're going. We're getting a wide view of our Pacific satellite and basically it's showing you the action in the central and eastern Pacific. Of course, we had Calvin develop last week. It blossomed into a pretty major hurricane, but now it is starting to weaken as it heads closer to the Hawaiian Islands, but it is still a tropical storm, still maintaining that tropical storm status. Maximum sustained winds at this point are at 50 miles per hour, and it is moving west fairly quickly at 21 miles per hour pressure at 1000 millibars. And there you see the big island of Hawaii. You can see it kind of outlined in yellow. That's because we have a tropical storm watch currently in effect for the big island of Hawaii where they could get maybe as much as four to seven inches of rain and of course some pretty big waves out there as this tropical storm slides on by. It looks like the worst of it may slide just to the south of the big island, but it is going to be a close call. So the effects will probably be felt late Tuesday evening, Tuesday night, and especially during the day on Wednesday as this potential tropical storm slides by the Hawaiian Islands and then it should weaken back to a remnant low an area of low pressure by Thursday with just 30 mile per hour winds. But as it's moving past Hawaii, it could still have winds around 45, potentially 50 miles per hour with gusts higher than that. So the main threat would be heavy rain that could lead to some flooding and of course those big waves that could be very threatening for those out in the water. So definitely not the time to be swimming here, but we do have that tropical storm watch in place for the big island of Hawaii. You can see it there outlined in yellow and that is going to be the major impact from um, Calvin as it slides past Hawaii, it should start to weaken and kind of fall apart after that. Let's jump over to the Atlantic and this is a wide view of the Atlantic and there's not a ton going on across the central portion of the Atlantic. We do have one system in the north central Atlantic, but as we look south, not a ton going on. We've still got that Saharan dust covering much of the Atlantic. So I think that's helping to hinder any additional development now. But as we start to see that dust kind of settle down and move out, I think we will start to see more systems blossoming here as well. But here's a look at Don. It is now a tropical depression. So I want to give you the coordinates for Don. It's just sitting out in the central Atlantic, still several hundred miles off to the northeast of Bermuda. So it's not impacting any land area right now. And it is basically going to make a big loop around itself over in the next two to three days and it is not going to be impacting anyone at this point. So basically a fish storm at this point with maximum sustained winds around 35 miles per hour. Movement right now to the southeast at 14 miles per hour, but then it's going to shift to the south and then it's going to start tracking back to the north and west. So interesting movement with Don, but Don isn't really going to amount to much. It's not going to do much. It sh should not be impacting the U.S. and it is not expected to reach any land areas anytime soon. So that is good news. We'll continue to track it, but it is forecast to become a tropical storm by Wednesday with winds around 45 miles per hour potentially. Let's quickly check out the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, and we've got a few showers and storms blowing up over portions of Central America and up into portions of the Jamaica area, Cuba, but nothing that is being monitored for any further development into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. So good news for us. We've still got that big heat dome across West Texas, so that means that that should actually help to steer any potential tropical activity away from us. But as we start to see the pattern shift, once that big heat dome breaks down and things start to shift gears as we go into August, we definitely have the very warm water in place to have some quick, rapid development of future tropical cyclones. We've got water temps out here in the middle to upper 80s, close to 90 in spots for portions of the Gulf and the Caribbean. So it's not going to take much for these storms to quickly strengthen and develop as we go into the most active period historically of hurricane season, which would be August and September. Same deal in the Atlantic, very warm, unusually warm waters out there, many spots still in the 80s with those buoy temps showing up. Here is that dust that I've been telling you about. We've been tracking this dust for the last couple of weeks and it's still quite widespread. So it's helping to 
pull in that drier air in the upper levels and kind of hinder tropical development for the most part. But once we start to get rid of that dust, we are expecting things to pick up steam and pick up speed and we are expecting more storms. That's why Colorado State University forecasters did increase the number of named storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes expected for the remainder of the hurricane season back on July 6. So they're now forecasting an above average season, 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes, and that is above our normal. Of course, now we've had four named storms, Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don for the Atlantic Basin. If we get a new storm, it would be Emily, and then the next name would be Franklin, that we go to Gert and then Harold. Of course, we're still in the first couple of months of our hurricane season, so typically not a lot of activity, but look at this. We've still got the peak to get through, and of course that is August and September, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that things will stay fairly quiet, but we know that usually is not the case. We were spared. We were very lucky last season. We didn't have any major activity, but of course we are watching and tracking things closely. If anything develops and begins to head our way, you will be the first to know. Make sure you grab our Fox 26 weather app for all the latest on the tropics. Of course, what's happening locally with our heat wave, any future radar events that we have, any rain or storm action on the radar, you can find that as well. Forecast cones, follow me feature, hurricane watches and warnings, everything can be found by downloading our Fox 26 weather app. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday and make it a great evening.